Hello and welcome everyone. We'll get started here in just about two and a half minutes so that we can start on the scheduled time. We'll be with you in a moment. And if you just joined us, we will start in a minute and a half. Thanks for your patience. Hello, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate this opportunity to speak with you. My name is John Petsy. Uh, my company is Sky Foundry, and we make an uh, analytics software platform for working with building system data, meters, sensors. And what I want to talk to you about today is how organizations are successfully using analytics and the processes involved so they can actually drive value from the analytic findings produced by analytic software. And uh, I entitled it Closing the Loop from Identification to Resolution, and uh, I think you'll understand why. Let's continue on. So first of all, a quick definition. What do we mean by analytics? We mean software that collects the data from building systems, sensors, and equipment, and automatically detects patterns in that data, patterns that represent faults, they represent deviations, they represent anomalies, correlations, but in the end, they're all opportunities for savings and improved performance. So that's what analytics is about. And one of the things that's worth pointing out here is that uh, the value of applying analytics to building systems has been clearly proven in thousands of facilities, billions of square feet, of deployments around the world in facilities of all types. These are some case studies that uh, we publish based on uh, success stories of our customers. But for the topic today, how do organizations drive value from analytics? Well, what we say is, you know, analytics finds what matters in your data. It finds outright faults, it finds deviation, it finds performance drift, but how do we create financial value? Well, we can only create that financial value by addressing those issues, right? And so that means there's a workflow process. From initial identification through the assignment of responsibilities, the resolution, the tracking and reporting, all of that is a key part of gaining the benefit, gaining the financial value of analytics. 
Now, some organizations uh, will utilize analytics in, um, in conjunction with their conventional CMMS and work order systems. And what we've seen is that gets many people part of the way, but it's often costly and complex, and it turns out it's often not an ideal fit for what comes out of analytics because the processes involved in taking diverse analytic findings through their life cycle from identification to resolution can actually be very different than those served by conventional work order systems. So sometimes there is a not a good fit because users need to easily create workflows that fit the specific and unique project needs and the type of results you're getting from analytics. And I think this is a good point, uh, a good point in the presentation to talk about this key fact about analytics. You know, we say analytics are not like an LED light bulb. It's not something you screw in and you instantly get savings. Applying analytics to building systems isn't like buying new equipment with a lower energy consumption rating. It's not possible to calculate the exact sa uh, savings ahead of time, right? Because analytics are finding the inefficiencies, the problems, the faults. So really, they're a tool. They enable us to see how our building systems are really performing. They identify those faults and deviations from expected performance. And of course, all of those are opportunities for savings, but they require action. We're going to have to address those findings to get the benefit from eliminating them. So in this presentation, we want to explore key concepts that underlie the workflow process that enables organizations to get true value out of their implementation of analytics. So we introduce a concept here called ARCs. We actually think of the analytic life cycle as a story. And uh, I'm sure you've all heard of the arc of the story, how, how a story goes through a process from beginning to end. Well, we use the term arc because we built an application around the concept of the analytic life cycle from the initial identification to the final resolution. So we've applied that concept to the workflow process for analytics. Now, because of the varied types of actions and responses that are involved in responding to analytic findings, um, we've created a solution that's based on a concept known as compound documents, a very special type of document. Comp compound documents can include notes, notations, discussions. They can include actions, comments, assignments, transitions of state as we go through that life cycle, schedules for res resolution, uh, labels and links to the fault views and attachments and reports and other attributes that are associated with the resolution of issues. Now, we call findings from analytics sparks. That's uh, our terminology for our product line called SkySpark. And what I want to show you is how this workflow system based on these compound documents take us through the workflow process. So let's take a look. The three initial types of documents. There are notes. Now notes provides operators with a method to add written documentation to the issues or to the data that they're looking at. So what it really does is enable and support a discussion trail among users, right? You and I can have a conversation. It's kind of like a chat, but it's associated with a set of data or an analytic finding. Now, it doesn't have an associated workflow. It might be our initial discussion. Look at this. What's your thought on this? Do you have any understanding of what's going on? Who should we uh, bring into the discussion? That would be notes. Now, work orders. Work orders, one of their key characteristics is they define a specific workflow process. And the most tailored and best fit maintenance and repair type activities that are associated with physical assets, physical equipment, whether it be air handlers, chillers, or dampers, or VAV boxes, fan coils, etc. And they include this concept of state transitions that go through the stages of the life cycle of that workflow process. And there's one more basic type called tickets. And tickets are a little different than work orders. They're really tailored to the types of workflows that are associated with software type support activities. 
addressing sequence of operation changes, uh, identifying problems with reports and other things. They too include the concept of state transitions to support their life cycle process. So those are the three types. Let's look a little deeper. Let's start by taking a look at notes. So as I said, notes provide a method to comment on and discuss data, issues, and add documentation, right? For example, you can add links to manuals, uh, to instructions, etc. But they don't have a defined workflow process or steps. They include things like the display name for to describe it. Here we see de electric demand versus equipment schedules. Of course, the creation time and who created this note. Uh, and then a formatable body of text where we can have those discussions. And that can include the replies by different users as we discuss it. And a key point is the ability to add attachments, right? And even to add attachments in replies. You know, I might say, does anybody know how this equipment works? And, and one of my other members of my organization might attach the instruction manual that he has. Okay? And then they have a view link. That's a view back to the data, back to the fault, back to the issue that caused us to start the discussion, to start the note to begin with. Okay. Work orders. So work orders add the key ability to define a specific workflow process. And that means assigning to people, scheduling, and a num number of other attributes. And again, they're most associated with maintenance and repair of physical assets. They have the state transitions, which is key. So they too have a display name, a creation time, record who created it, and then that formatable text in the body of the work order with replies and uh, by different users indicating who's replied with the ability to add attachments. And of course, with the link back to the report or the view that showed the problem, the finding, the spark. Right? And here's an example of a work order. We've got a cold call from a location on an air handler. Now, key things you have with the work order state. Is this brand new? Have we just opened it? Is it resolved? Is it canceled? And these are all customizable so you can add more states that fit how you run your maintenance and repair operations. They also allow us to pick priority levels such as critical high, medium, and low. That's a minimum. You can add other priority levels. And then the subject of the work order, the equipment, the device, the sensor. And now, because we're going to take action, the assignee, the person that we're going to assign this work order to, we probably want to give them a due date. And then we want to add labels, right, that help define what this is about. Maybe it's a breakdown. Maybe it's damage on equipment. Maybe it just is go and inspect this or do your required maintenance, plumbing, safety, support, put it on the wish list, etc. And those are all extensible as well. So we can add custom labels beyond a default set that are provided with the default work order. All right, now we talk about tickets. And this different in tickets is that they're more applicable to software support type activities. So they still include state transitions and assignments. But dealing with software issues is different than dealing with physical repair issues. It involves different people. So tickets are a little different. Here's an example, right? Carytown Electric main meter, we've got data quality issues. We can see that we're missing data or data appears incorrect. Right? Now, of course, we have the basics. We have the display name, the text field that describes the ticket, like I just reviewed. We have the creation time and who it was created by, and of course, here too, the formatable text, so we can have a detailed discussion to describe the issue, the resolution, etc. We have replies. We have the ability to add those attachments, right? We might add attachments uh, again on examples. Here's the data I'm getting, you know, and include a CSV file or an Excel file. And then, of course, the ticket state. Is it brand new? Have we opened it? We make a distinction there. Is it resolved, canceled? What are the priority levels? Of course, the subject of the ticket. And the person we're going to assign it to, right? When we create a ticket, we're going to assign it to somebody to resolve. We're going to give it a due date, most likely. And then the labels, right? And here the labels might be, hey, this is a bug. Uh, this is a requested enhancement. It's uh, something to put on the wish list. Or maintenance has to be done to straighten out the issue, update the software, whatever. So that's the concept of tickets. So those are the three types of workflow documents. Now, how do we manage them? 
Well, that's where the app, we call it the Arc app, comes in. This is where we can view, edit, manage, transition these workflows, right? To close them out, to add additional tags, to add additional commentary. So it's really where the workflow system comes together for the user. Now it's a graphical point and click user interface. You can simply click on an issue and depending on your uh, access privilege levels, you can edit that, add tags, or maybe just comment on it, right? At, at a high level, you can change the assignment. Maybe somebody says, hey, I, I can't address this. I don't have that experience. You, so as the manager, you're going to want to change the assignment. And then you want to do filtering, right? I want to see all of the open work orders, resolved work orders, in-process work orders, etc., or the ones that have been assigned to Jack or Claire or Kate, the ones that are associated with certain due date, right? So you've got all of this easy click filtering, uh, point and click filtering. And so you have a number of different views. You can go in and add commentary, you can add tags, and you can filter. You can filter these arcs on any and all of their attributes, their type, their state, their label, their priority, the equipment they're, they're on, the person they're assigned to, their date, due date, etc. through a variety of uh, apps and pop-up windows that are supported in the app. And I want to spend a moment to talk about the importance of attachments and the ability to integrate with standard file systems like Dropbox and Google Docs, right? The workflow application provides that ability so that we can attach files to all types of workflow documents, notes, work orders, and tickets. And what's important about this is it means there's no limit on the size and number of files that can be used as attachments, right? We can attach a link to a Dropbox uh, file that might be too large to include the text of in our reply, in our commentary, in our discussion, right? And again, this could include links to manuals, instructions, photos. Maybe I took a photo of the equipment. See, here it's broken. Look at this. The damper linkage is detached, right? I can include those photos that might I might upload to Dropbox or Google Docs or Google Photos. So it's completely integrated. And this puts it in the realm of how people manage their life at work, right? The file systems they use, the documents they use, the processes they use. And I want to talk about customization. You know, what? what it turns out that all applications and organizations are different and their internal maintenance and repair operations and processes are different. So it's great to have a set of default workflow documents, default labels, default tags, but the structure of workflow documents needs to be fully customizable to meet the varied needs of different organizations. So you can customize the workflow process, the state transitions, user permissions, labels, etc. Now what we've done is we've made a default set of standard document types that fit most applications and they don't require any additional effort. But this ability to customize allows customers to extend and enhance the workflows to meet your exact needs. And what we've done here is by combining the ARC workflow system with the analytics, we've given people an easy to use, right at their fingertips method to process analytic issues, analytic findings from identification to resolution. So, in summary, you know, analytics find the things that matter in our data, the faults, the deviations, the performance drift, et cetera. But in order to create that financial value, we have to address the issues. And that means we have a workflow process. And integrated workflow tools streamline that process. Now, they still allow you to integrate with external systems, CMMS systems, work order management systems. You can do both. You could have uh, the ARC system for operators, but still pass on those those work orders to an external system to be handled by you know an existing CMMS or work order system that you may have in your organization. So it never limits you. It simply streamlines and enhances the overall process of driving analytic issues from identification to final resolution. That's our comments today on how organizations are using workflow processes to drive value from analytics. SkySpark's the name of our software. Our company is skyfoundry.com. You can find the URL right here on this 
uh, slide. We'd be glad to talk to you and uh, provide more information on SkySpark Analytics and more information on the ARC Workflow app. Thanks so much for your attention, everybody. We appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today.